Seriously? Like that's your best idea? Good afternoon. So I, uh, I was at a showing, I was at a few showings this weekend and uh, it didn't go very well. Uh, let me just put it that way. There was, there was things that I guess people are just to the point where they're so sure they're going to sell their house. They don't even care anymore. Uh, but, uh, I just wanted to go over some of the things that irritate, uh, irritate me or other real estates when, uh, setting home showings and I've ranked them the most, the, the thing that bothers me the most is at the end. So stick around for that. Let's get to it. I wrote it myself. So uh, one of the things is as a seller, don't stay for a showing unless you're homebound. I know, I know. You want to be able to show potential buyers all the great things about the house you've had for 50 years. Unfortunately, they don't care. They just want to walk through the house, picture what it would look like with them inside it and move on to the next one. As a seller, your house is so important to you. And I totally understand that. But you have to give buyers their space. Uh, as a follow-up to that, number two, don't sit in your car watching buyers either. I was showing a house this weekend. My buyer texted me that there was some strange dude staring at her from his car. She thought it might be an agent, but it was unsettling anyway, enough for her to text me before I'd gotten there. There was also another car pointed at us from across the lot. While we went in inside and looked around, I noticed the pictures matched the people watching us outside. Creepy. There's no advantage for the seller to do this. I'm not going to talk to you when you're working with a listing agent. I'm going to talk to them. And it just creeps people out. I mean, it was weird. It was odd and I didn't like it. Um, number three, stop with the multiple showings at the same time. I know that houses are flying off the market at a record pace. I know some agents who think that it helps their buyer if they can get two or three buyers to go through uh, the house at the same time because it makes the house popular. I don't know. In the age of Corona, I don't particularly like walking through a house with other groups. It's the same reason I avoid open houses for the most part. On my listings, I set it up so that the agent can overlap a showing, but they will get a notification that someone else is showing the house and they can choose to pick a different time. I totally understand that sometimes it's impossible to show houses in orderly fashion. I'm just pointing out that it might end up hurting your seller. Here's a few reasons why. Number one, I was looking at a house this past weekend and there were four other people showing the house. It was like 1,200 square feet. One of the buyers had four young children and they were running around all over the place. Now I get it. Kids are wild and there's no judging on my part. However, my buyer just wanted to get out of the house at that point. I mean, they were done. They're like, I don't care. Number two, agents think that if you see other people at a showing, it indicates a strong interest for the house and your buyer will have to bring a great offer to the table to get the house. In reality, in this market, when are you likely to have, when you're likely to have multiple offers anyway, how much stronger of an offer do you think you can get after 30 have already been submitted? I mean, it's like, seriously, like, I mean, read the room. Number three, if there's a stupid amount of people at a showing, I might be tempted not to even bother writing an offer. Why should I waste my time when there are other houses on the market that may not have the perception of a lot of offers, even if they might? I mean, if, if there's all these people here and they're all writing offers, let's go to a house where there's not. Now, that's hard in this market. Number four, be up front when there's issues with the house. The other day, I went to a showing where the flooring was destroyed in the entire house. It had come apart. The slots were broken off, so the floor was in need of a complete replacement. Plus, the flooring was cheap anyway. Give us a heads up. You can say something like flooring credit may be provided or the house needs a little TLC. You can just put it in the agent remarks. You don't have to run a file of your sellers. Just give me a heads up. That's all I'm asking. I mean... People aren't pricing homes for less, you know, for lower just because of floors right now. But it sure would have been nice to get a heads up that like this house is going to need all new flooring. I mean, it's not exactly cheap. Uh, number five, confirm showings in a timely manner. Sometimes I'll have five houses in a row to show. I'm sitting at my desk scheduling the most efficient path. And there's always this one house that doesn't confirm the showing for like 24 hours. That's too long. If I have to adjust the schedule, at least give me a little time to do so. Number six, if you're going to accept any offer that comes in, let me know that too. I had a house that the buyers were interested in seeing this weekend that had an open house listed for the afternoon. Uh, no big deal. The listing said that offers were being accepted up until Monday. By the time we went to the open house, offer was not only accepted, but the inspector was at the house. 
I didn't check if the open house was canceled specifically because you said you were accepting offers until Monday. I can understand if you're taking offers at all times as time is of the essence. It's only when you say you're taking offers until Monday and then cut it short that makes it an issue. Number seven, I don't want to see a seller letter at, at the house. Maybe I'm in the majority, maybe I'm not. I don't want to see a seller letter at the showing. I know you want to tell buyers how great your house is, but they usually devolve into some sort of story about how you raised your kids or something about a pet or a vacation or how you saved up money to get the house. None of that is helpful for me when I'm trying to get my buyers to write an offer on your house. They really don't care about you. It's harsh, I know. Number eight, I like animals, but I'm not a professional cat wrangler and I don't particularly want to play with your dog, even if it's friendly. Look, I love animals. I really do. But when you write that the cat will hide under the bed during the showing, my luck tells me that the cat is making a run for the door the moment I get the door open. Now what? Now I get to stop my showing and go chase a cat? This isn't what I signed up for. I don't think pet owners realize that animals react totally different to strangers. If you can take the dog for a walk, do so. If you want to put the cat in a room and tell me not to open the door, I'm cool with that too. It's just, I, it just kind of ruins things when I have to go chasing after animals outside. I have to call the agent and say, hey, the cat got out. I mean, I don't want to deal with any of that. I just want to show the house. Number nine, I can probably unlock the door to your house if I have the right key and if the lock isn't odd. I joke all the time that the only thing they taught me during my real estate license course was how to open a door. They didn't. School of hard knocks on that one. Do you know how many showings are canceled each year from doors that won't open? I don't even understand how it happens. Um, if there's a key in the lockbox, that's great. Let's just make sure that that's the right key for that house. I mean, maybe check the lock yourself before you put the, the showing active or put the, put the showings active. And then um, also, like, try it. Just, just try it. See how it goes. Um, number 10, I don't know how your alarm works. There's only about a million different kinds. Some alarms are easy. Just press a code. Others are press a code, turn around in circles, offer praise to the gods, and then maybe you can disarm the alarm. Tech has come a long way in alarms. If you are still rocking the non-digital alarm from the 80s, that is cool and all, but I just don't remember how they work. Number 11, I don't think chocolate-covered coffee beans are good, and I usually think they're raisins or peanuts. I kind of like it when people leave food or candy out for a showing. To me, it's quite non-threatening, like you're happy people took the time to see your house. But I don't like chocolate-covered coffee beans. They look like chocolate-covered raisins or peanuts, which I like. Imagine my bitter disappointment when I bite into a chocolate-covered coffee bean. It makes me sick. Maybe you like them, and that's totally cool, but I think you're, I think you're tricking me. Uh, number 12, it's totally cool if you put out a sign like, watch your head, or improvements you've made to the home. It's not okay to make signs as if you're a third grader. So what do I mean here? Well, sometimes there will be low clearance in the basement. So someone writes, watch your head. I totally appreciate that one. But writing a sign in crayon, locked door, taped to the front door is one of those things I'm probably not going to forget and you probably shouldn't bother with. There's other signs too, like the sign on the closet, this door locked. I can usually figure that out. You aren't helping me sell the house to my buyers. And finally, number 13, you have a big dog in a small backyard and you leave dog bombs everywhere. I don't know about you, but have you ever been to a backyard in St. Louis in August when someone doesn't clean up after their dog? It's pretty bad. Like, seriously. How is it that you're trying to put your best foot forward to sell your house only to leave these dog bombs everywhere? Totally not cool. That's what I have for you today. I don't know. I thought it was good. Let's have a little bit of fun. Everything's so serious all the time. Um, hey, if you like that, why don't you hit the subscribe button? I, I don't think I've had a subscriber in like six months. It'd, it'd be nice to get one. Um, uh, with that, thank you for watching. Thank you for listening. And I'll catch you on the next one.